while we learn about the opposition on the pitch, Wiser learns how to heat my home. Rob, we said last week it was going to be five must-win games. It's down to four must-win games now. Um, just reflect a little bit on Leicester and, and where your thoughts are now after that. Oh, one of those weird ones, isn't it, where it becomes one of the most frustrating games of the season. I said that to players afterwards, and to be fair, that's a bit how the players feel. I think they know they didn't really do themselves justice, and that isn't taking anything away from Leicester. Leicester are a good side. Their results proved that. Their result here against Sandy, at Sandy Park proved it. They're a tough opposition. So all that kind of thing, not taking anything away from Leicester, but we did shoot ourselves in the foot a little bit. I mean, when you actually look at the game, right from the start, we received the first kickoff. We play a little bit, which which was fine. There was there was an opportunity there for us, but then we settle down. We, for some reason, we do a little short ruck and we do a poor kick off it. We get charged down and we actually defend pretty well for a, for a number of phases, a number of, number of situations, and then concede a, a try before we get out of our twenty two to a to a cross field kick. And we've got more num more backs on our feet because they've added guys to the mall. And you look and you go, come on, you know, we 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 started in a way that's inaccurate. Uh, we've, we've shown we've shown the fight in the 22 but our inaccuracies just killed us and there's seven points and that's the start of the game you know the next points come from uh, we, we're putting a decent defensive set together it was a, a bit of a speculative chip over the top fair, you know fair play to, to Tigers they convert it but they've got one guy chasing we get two guys we got two guys back under the ball and the bounce of the ball takes it away and there you go it's again and and yet we we then couldn't yeah, yeah, and then we throw the ball on the floor in the second half you know, we throw the ball on the floor under a little bit of pressure, but but limited pressure really. We scooped up, and there's another try. And if you actually stop and break down where their points came from, you go, are we really? Are we, are we really using no, they didn't break it, did they? No, we lost the own Premiership road bid by this happening. Do you know what I mean? And and an important one. And I think that's the frustration of the players because I think there's so many of those bits they were in they were in control of. Now that's not taking anything away from Leicester and the pressure they exerted and they, they were strong in the turnover. They broke up a number of our attacks. But actually in the second half, we, we actually started to find it pretty easy to attack. you know, and, and we could have done a lot better in the first half as well. And I think those are some frustrations for us. And they're going to be frustrations for me because it was probably a repeat of a, of a few things that have happened this year where we've conceded some very simple scores without really as showing what we're about and uh, the detail that we need to drive our game and I think that would be the frustration I think if we miss out mm -hmm. it would be missing out on some of the some of the closer games that were there for us really to win if we'd have played anywhere near our potential Bath this weekend local derby but as you say it's always a chance to put, rectify things pretty quickly mm -hmm. it would be a similar scenario if we play anywhere near our potential we've got a great opportunity to take points out of the game if we don't if we don't play near our potential with near our potential and Bath do they'll win the game it's, it's not it's not difficult scenarios now we are in we are kind of in do or die territory but you know we were last week and it didn't bring the best out of us it, it brought us some fight and hard work and you can see that at the end you know we're, we're fighting to win the game right to the death but it still didn't bring the best out of us we've got to start seeing the best of ourselves and that's all we can keep talking about you know it's this I said to the lads after like, I can't push a magic button when you come into training on Tuesday and just go there you go I'm going to win from now on almost you guys have got to do that you guys have got to look at each other and decide how you're going to do it and how you're going to fulfil your roles and the responsibilities you want to take and I, and I do think we've got a play group, playing group who can do that but that's going to be their challenge you talk about that frustration is it getting more by the week or is it just the lads like, well I think the fr frustration grows probably as opportunities to put it right become less at the same time we have got a strengthening player group as well so actually in some ways the frustration grows when some of the detail misses because I actually think if you look at this Six Nations period we actually did probably better than a lot of people would have anticipated looking at our previous results and a lot of that was based on young players or players with less experience or players with having opportunities coming in. And the one thing they made sure they got right was the detail of our game because that was going to give us the chance to win the game. And they were probably a little bit scared of getting that wrong. And so the frustration's probably grown a bit in that we had a more experienced team on the field and actually we made some base errors that we should have known not to do. And I think that's probably why frustration increases a little bit. And I think that's that's the battle we've got to make sure we, we end up not putting in frustrating type performances. We can be disappointed with the performance, that's fine. But we shouldn't go off the pitch and actually be frustrated with each other. 
back this weekend. They've been at the bottom end of the table for, for pretty much the whole season, but they're a side that are always going to be nuggety. They're always going to be there and they've got a bit of form about them now. Yeah, well, they'll, they'll be obviously massively disappointed to lose last weekend. Sale, Sale, people know. Obviously, the table shows it. They're in around top four, fight for, for a top four spot now. Um, we're semi finalists last year. So, Bath aren't even most. You know, you don't you don't get in a winning position against Sale, particularly because Sale tends to start very well. You don't you don't get into that position unless you're a decent side. We've got some real challenges. They'll have international players back this week, and they didn't have available last week. You know, but at the same time, you know, it, it's not about Bath. It's about us. You know, and that's what we've got to talk about. This, this weekend needs to be about us. When we play, and it's about us. We can put in some incredible performances. We've shown that over the last three or four years, and that's still within us because it's basically the same group of players. And we've got a couple of guys missing, but it's not far off the same group of players. And I think that's just the key. The key is just to just to pull ourselves together and, and get ourselves, just getting the details and the foundations of our game right, because that lets all the good stuff then be positives. At the moment, our good, stuff's, our good stuff is being taken away by our negative stuff. When we're at our best, there isn't much negative and all the positives just add and add and add to that real baseline, good, solid foundation. And that's what we've got to get back to. Some good and bad news this week. Santi Glondona staying, Tom O'Flaherty going. I know some fans have said, oh, you weren't going to lose any more front line. We've known for weeks that he was off, but we have to play the rules with everyone else. And yeah, I mean, it's probably, boys. probably. sorry, I mean, I, I don't mind admitting it. That, I think the scenario happened with me when I've been doing these li- recent like members forums and, and chats and stuff, is that when you're known for, literally for months, that a player's leaving, you kind of move on yourself. So I go, so I'm, I'm sitting these meetings. Go, yeah, well, I know, yeah, Johnny Hill, Sam Skinner, Tom Flaherty, Sean Lonsdale, Jack Wolf. So that you kind of reel them off. And you know who's leaving. And so when you get asked, "Was well, anybody any else leaving?" You go, "Well, no, I haven't. I hadn't even considered that it hadn't actually been on Tom. It hadn't been announced." So I'll, I'll apologise to anybody. <laughs> want, anybody who wants an apology, that was the reason for it. Um, I, I, I feel it's a difficult one. I, I feel really pleased for Tom. You know, Tom's a great guy. He's been brilliant for us. Uh, he's still performing very well. He's wholehearted in everything he does. One of those guys you enjoy coaching, you enjoy spending time with, um, has played a huge part in our recent success. You can't wish anything else but good luck Good luck to the guy. You know, he, he's just, he's just, I'm really pleased for him because he's got himself in that specific position that you always want a player to get into. You want them to join you. You want them to fight to be the best player they can, to fight to be successful, to help the team be successful. And if the outcome of that is that, the, the, that some stage the contract offer that's there is a better one than, than you can do or is a better opportunity for a player, well, that's fantastic. That, that's what you want every player to do. You want every player to be striving to be at the top of their game. And that, that's the position you want to get guys into. You know, for Tom, that, that's his opportunity. And I'm, I'm delighted for him. I don't, there's, there's not a negative there for me. I'd love him to stay. But he's going and he's going with best wishes. But you do keep Santi and that's a huge boost for you. Yeah, well, Santi's probably the, the flip side of that scale in that came here on an opportunity when, with, when we had um, some injury dispensation we could use for Jacques Vermeulen. Has taken that opportunity well. Uh, he's, he's a young man, kind of at the start of his frontline career. I know he's had a couple of international caps, but I think that's come a little, that's probably come quite quickly in his career without him playing too much what you call real frontline rugby. Well, he's now starting his frontline rugby career. That's fantastic for him. He's got loads of development. Um, and I just think he's, the, he's that kind of ideal recruit when we need to replace him about five forwards. He's, he's that ideal scenario. He's already here. He's already fitting in. He's already doing well. Already doing well. 